parodies, original animations, let's plays, game development, game design tutorials, and more. Join the Mad Hand House Discord server. Alright everybody, let's finish this motherfucker. Welcome game developers to Doug Develops the Rail Shooter Clone. Yes. Alright, so I'm sorry about yesterday. Uh, tons of things to do and I didn't get done until like late that night. So I figured what the hell, might as well just do this. Uh, um, might as well do this after... Shit. Fuck, fuck, fuck. Might as well do the rest of this today, essentially. So, while we're in here, right, in our Ripper Gun Projectile, what I'm going to do is I'm going to set this... Oh, I already set it to Overlap All by Def uh, Overlap All Dynamic. Why? Um, because the thing is, once this mesh over... You can try an event hit. I uh, actually had some bad luck with... Uh, like, I've had event hit with a mesh in the past, uh, with a static mesh in the past. Uh, so, but overlap all is just as well. So what we're going to do is once we overlap something, we're just going to destroy the actor. Then we'll, we're going to destroy the, uh, it and the actor. And then we're going to increment uh, the player's kill count. So on component begin overlap, right? We get uh, other actor and just say, shit, what the fuck was it called? Random duder, thank you. Random duder. First thing we want to do with this thing is destroy it. Why don't you just do the... Um, uh, why don't you set simulate physics? Uh, fuck that, I don't have time. If you want, you could just say, like, um, get actor, transform, and then you can spawn the, the dude or dead from there and then destroy the actor like we did in the... In the uh, shit line trace, but I, I I got no time for that. So after that is said and done, we want to get all actors of class. Why? So we can increment the kill count. Ow. And we're gonna it's gonna be rail character. We're gonna get a copy. And we're gonna get kill count. We're gonna add one to it. I'm gonna just use increment. Um, for like I said, force of habit, and then we set kill count. <clears throat> set that kill count, and then plug that into here. And then once that's set and done, we destroy the actor. <clears throat> we destroy the rail, the rail, the ripper gun. Ah, so. That said, let's go to the level blueprint, and I deleted the second target point, because of course I did. So we're going to grab this, we're going to get a reference to it, and then we're going to do another move to point it, point it, or whatever the fuck you want to call it, move to, there we go. And get actor location. And then plug that in here. Now there's something you guys have to know. If we were to play this right now, right? Uh, we... Uh, well, nothing would happen. We'd just move to the second point. Um, but we have to... Uh, we have to check to see if the player has moved to this location and we have to have an error tolerance as well so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna uh... 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 shit duplicate it there, uh... duplicate the rail character I'm gonna <clears throat> get actor location All right. I'm gonna drag this out and say equal we're gonna have an equal vector we plug this into here well, what's the error tolerance going to be? Uh, let's say if it's within um, 50 units. Alright. And we branch this out. Plug this, plug this in. On true, alright, we want to say, okay, if the player is there, that means we can shoot. We set can shoot to true. 
and we want to call the dude spawner. We want to get the dude spawner, and we want to call the spawn function, the spawner function. On false, we delay it by like 0.2 seconds. Why? Here's the thing. How Blueprint works is that, first of all, Event Begin Play only runs once. It doesn't run an event tick, it only runs once. So, uh, we have to continuously check in this area to see if the player has gotten to where we wanted to get to. And when we do get to that point, we, set can, sh we can shoot and, and this thing will spawn. So if we compile this and play from here... Hey, look at that! But we don't move. Well, yeah, we haven't set anything. We haven't set anything to move it up. We haven't set to move it over there yet. <coughs> Alright, so... Now, what we have to do... Now, what we want to do, after this is said and done... We want to get... Uh, I'm gonna, you know, I'm just gonna control W because I don't want these lines going all over the fucking place. We wanna get kill, get kill count. Oh man, and I have gotten some good news. And then we wanna, uh, from the dude spawn, we wanna get max count. Right. Um, because max count is still set to whatever we set this. Oh, right, right. Yeah, so because it's on Event Begin Play and it's only... Uh, let me go here. Even though kill count is is being set to zero after the spawn function works, keep in mind, at Event Begin Play, max count is still going to be equal to two because it doesn't... Uh, because we set it that way when it started. And we don't call this function until we get to a specific area. See, this isn't being used on event begin play because that way, um, because that way, max count can still be equal. Can still be equal. So now what we have to do is we have to check if our kill count is equal to our max count, which it will be once we get to once we kill the two dudes. On true, we'll do stuff, but on false, we'll delay it. So, what good news did you get? Aggretsuko got renewed for a fourth season. I love that show, and I will not apologize for it. Anyway, uh, to all the people who love Aggretsuko, what up? Anyway, um, so, on true, we're going to set can shoot to false. Because we, can, we don't want to shoot while we're moving. And then what we want to do is we want to uh, uh, move to here. So we're gonna get this. I get target point three. I'm gonna get at the location. And then we're gonna reset. Before we do anything more, we're gonna reset kill count to zero. All right, because that way, yeah, if you come across another encounter, then this is automatically going to be reset to zero. Gotcha. So then we move to point it. Let's move that into here. Let's move that into here. And then let's move this up. Wait a minute. Let me check on my dude spawner real fast. Why? Right. Yeah, I thought I forgot to sh uh, showcase that. Okay, so let me get rid of this. Um, because I noticed how in the tutorial I had this. I'm an idiot because I was like, wait a minute, no, that's not supposed to. Ha that's not how it's supposed to work. The box extend is supposed to go to the box extend. You take the box out and you get world location, and then plug that into its origin. Not the bo the box extent doesn't go into the origin and the extent. No, you want to get the world location and then get its box extent. And then plug those two, and then the world location goes into the origin, box extent goes into box extent, you're fine. That said, when we test this out now, ugh, that'll happen. Oh, really? Yeah. 
There we go. Hi. I'm what you call a red blooded American. So we're moving, but we don't rotate. How does that happen? Oh, um, well, because they're, they're essentially spawning in the same spot. Ow, oh, yeah. Anyway, you can uh, fix that. You can make the area bigger. Ah, pretty much. Otherwise, uh, other than that, like, you can, um... Go on a deuter spawn, and, yeah, just make the area bigger. That's pretty, that's, that's pretty much it. Um, otherwise, you can just use random... Because you have to understand, the spawner, you don't necessarily need a deuter spawn point. You could basically just have, uh, if you want to have multiple spawn points, you can. Um, uh, you can, yeah, you can have multiple spawn points, like, for instance, let's say, for all intents and purposes, I have blah, and then blah, right, and, uh, how do I scale them down, I oh, fuck it, uh, and you could just say spawn one, spawn one, spawn one, it could be anywhere on the, on the, in the, in the box, in the boxy area, and then when you go here, just either just spawn them, and then rather than having rather than having the rather than checking for max kill count, you could just say like, oh okay, um, how many how many kills do you want per spawn? And then you could just say like something like three. So instead of actually saying do, does ma uh, does the player's kill count equal the max kill count, get rid of the max kill count and then just type in whatever hard coded number you want to do. Ah, okay. Yeah. So now what we want to do at this point is rotate is rotate this. To do that, we could. We'll have to go into our rail character. You could if you wanted to for all intents and purposes. Uh, the super dumb way would be to add a timeline here in the level blueprint. Add timeline, and uh, I'm not—I'm just not gonna name it. I'm gonna add a float track. I'm gonna make this one. S <sighs> Come on, I'm gonna make this one second long. I'm gonna hold down Shift, left click at the start, and left click at the end of the track. Make sure that the they're they're in the they're in their specific time slots. So this is zero, and you would be something like negative ninety. Uh, let's let's click on these two. To, uh, zo let's zoom into fit. And with that highlighted, I'm gonna highlight this as well. Hit one. So that way it auto curves, go to the event graph, and then you basically uh, get player controller, and then get, uh, yeah, get, yeah, yeah, control rotation, split the struct pin, set control, oh, for fuck's sake. Ah, oh, for fuck's sake, I've been hitting the wrong key. Set control rotation. Split this struct pin. This goes into you, this goes into you. Uh, and then... Because this is a negative 90, this is negative, so we can just add it. Are you sure? Yeah, because if it's... If, you, if negative 90 plus um, zero, it's going to be negative 90. Oh, right. So plug that plug that in plug that in plug this into update and then compile play oh right what happened why did it why did it derp out like that oh um that's mainly because we need to we didn't check to see oh you have to run that check again mm-hmm so, uh, you set this equal, equal to vector, but not exactly. And then we, uh, get actor location. Error tolerance is gonna be 50. Branch, plug that in. There. 
add a delay on false that goes here on true set can shoot you have to set that to false plug that in and then you want to play from and then, yeah play from start fuck it let's move this up so that way it's a little clean let's try this again Hi. Moving. I'm what you call a red-blooded American. I work two jobs. Why does it violently rotate like that? Because uh, okay, you're gonna need to fuck around with the. You're gonna need to fuck around with this number, something fierce. Okay, um, uh, because that's why the the it it rotates so violently, mainly because it's it's because of this, really? Yeah. Can't you just um, set its control rotation without needing to, I don't know, violently rotate or just, um, like, unfinished or something? Here's the problem with that. Um, so, here's the problem with that. All right. So let's, what you're saying is, uh, let's get rid of this for a second. Uh, let's get rid of you. Let's just say negative 90 here. And then let's just plug this in. If you do that, you're essentially just going to teleport. Hi. I'm what you call a red blood in See? It's just a violent transition. If you want to keep it like that, you know, be my guest. Uh, but like that's the other thing. That's the other way you can do it. But you're going to have to fuck around. You're going to have to fuck around with this number. Uh, to try to not get it so um, it's so violent, you can move this up. Well, I said, well, yeah, you're gonna have to move this up instead of like negative ninety. You can say like something like stupid, like fifty or something like that. Either way, um, uh, you could say like let's just say negative fifty, right? Or hell, negative ten, and then take this. Plug this in on update and plug this in and then on finished we can do at that point because we could just as easily uh, fake it and we control W we control W this but then we just say negative 90 and you plug that into finished right? So let's compile and let's play. Hi, I'm what you call a red-blooded American. I work two jobs to make sure I'm my family. Hmm. Negative eighty because I forgot that it's moving. Ugh. Negative eighty because it's moving at negative ten anyway. So anyway, you were saying, yeah, before I hit the fucking tilde key like a moron. <clears throat> so, like I was saying, in add timeline, let's go to float track. You're gonna have to, uh, let's make, let's reset this to one. And, and, uh, you're gonna have to fuck with this number, something fierce. And that's the dumb way of doing it. What's the other way? Uh, the other way, uh... The other way, it's... The other way to do it is, uh... Oh, shit. We can... Set... We can set its rotation, right? But it's gonna be, like, it's gonna be teleporting. So, it gets... Actor rotation and get player controller. We have to get the control. We have to set control rotation, but it won't be a smooth transition. No, it won't. Um, <clears throat> no, it won't. It's just going to be. It's going to be a straight teleport. Uh, so, damn it. I'm what 
what you call a red blooded American. Isn't there another way? Like, uh, our interp. Yeah, what the. Uh, okay, so. Get control rotation. The other way of doing it is R interp 2. And R interp 2 is essentially the same thing. Uh, you get the. The current is the pl player is the controlled rotation. You want the target to be the target point rotation. And as far as delta time is concerned, you could get world delta seconds. And as far as interp speed, you can actually hard code that. I'll just put one. The problem with that is it's going to be the same thing. It's going to be a it's going to be a hard teleport. Hi, I'm what you call a red blooded American. I work. Wait, what? So control rotation. Look at world delta seconds. Wait. Oh, for fuck's sake. I got these. I got these reversed, didn't I? Yeah, I did. Uh, the current is going to be the current rotation that you want to uh, that you want to have is this. The target rotation is what you want it was what you want rotated. I always get those two confused because I'm an idiot. Regardless. Hi, I'm what you call a red blooded man. There you go. I work Ow. Jobs yeah, it's still going to be a hard teleport. House. So, you really want to focus on the dumb way of doing things, which is adding a timeline. You could, how you would do that is, um, you'd go into here, uh, get a custom, custom event, and then basically doing that same thing over and over and over and over and over again. Now, um, <clears throat> if you guys want some refinements, like, uh, I don't know, Adding an ammo counter or a health bar similar to to uh, House of the Dead, I could do that. Um, I'd much rather fo um, like after like after my break, I'd much rather focus on the uh, how to clone cyberpunk abilities because one of the things I wanted to do was the quick hat system, which isn't that difficult because all you need to do is basically. Uh, uh, on like key hit, bullet time, uh, set like uh, set the time dilation, and whatever you're looking at, you just continuously hit a line trace, da 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 da, um, etc. etc. Or the quick dash shit. But yeah, like this is essentially how you would do uh, um, a rail shooter. You basically go to a path. You tell the you go to a path. On go uh, on path uh, like if you go to a specific path like an enemy encounter you check for it and then you spawn X amount of enemies and then from there you have a kill counter keep that score and once you reach that score go to the next area and then next area and then next area and then next area um, if you want again if you want a smooth transition a smoother transition go for timelines um, you just have to fuck with those numbers. And, uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. So, uh, end it here, narrator. And there you have it, game developers. Uh, tune in next time for Doug Teaches. Happy holidays and all that good jazz. Yeah, happy holidays, happy new year and all that. And, um, yeah, uh, later.